When I made my video about this uh, little solar charge controller, I was really pleased to have Julian Eilert comment on my video. Um, and one of the things he said here uh, was, the big advantage of the PIC over the Arduino version is low current consumption, just one milliamp instead of the 28 milliamps of the Arduino version. Now, if you remember in the second version that I made, I was able to save five milliamps, but to be honest, I took Julian's statement here as a bit of a challenge. And then I found these uh, little AT tinies. This is a diagram of the 4585, uh, and the only difference between those, I believe, is a different amount of memory. They've still got eight pins on both of them, and the pins are mapped the same way. And I've been waiting for these to turn up from abroad, but here we are. Finally, got something to play with. Whoops. One of the things that struck me when I was looking at these AT. 85s was that all the different pins can do various different things and when I looked into the data sheet that confirmed that these pins can be assigned to different functions. A bit more research and I found this website technobloggy.com and this post from July 2014 about PWM outputs on the AT, AT, AT Tiny 85. And scrolling down a little bit further, it suggests we can also get three PWM outputs. So, using that site and um, looking at the date sheet for the AT Tiny 85, um, I've adapted uh, Julian's Arduino sketch um, for the AT. Tiny 85 and I'll make it available in a link below this video um, but these are the adjustments of main adjustments about to make up here um, we're looking at timer 0 and control register A and we need to set it to um, one of the pins should we say to non-inverting mode um, another pin which we're using down here for the charge pump to inverting mode and Julian does an interesting video on why that's necessary and they've also enabled fast PWM because the charge pump should work more efficiently at higher frequencies and then looking at timer 0 register B we need to enable fast PWM mode and we're putting no prescaler and pre that will enable us to get the fastest PWM mode possible. We also have to adjust um, timer 1 control register, um, preventing the timer from using one of those pins that we're now using for timer 0. And again, no prescaler. And then this general control register for timer 1, which is a bit poorly um, explained really because we need three PWM outputs um, we can enable the enable the use of OC1B pin and in this case I've chosen that it's in non-inverting mode so as before with Julian's sketch we've got um, pin 0 in this case at PWM right analog right 117 and pin 1 analog right 137 and the only other adjustments to Julian's sketch, again, are uh, the pin number that we're reading, pin 4, and the analog right, pin 3. So with this project in mind, I've redesigned um, the layout um, on a piece of strip board for the AT Tiny based solar charge controller. Um, all the same components as I used in the original um, however, obviously I've substituted the uh, Arduino Pro Mini for an AT Tiny 85 And there's the diagram with all the components on. So we are using a 78L05 again, uh, like I did on the first one, because obviously the AT Tiny doesn't have a voltage regulator built into it. So I'll put a link to this diagram as well. And as if by magic, on this occasion, I've already completed it.
And it's worth noting on this version of the solar charge control that I've put a 100 nanofarad capacitor here after the voltage regulator. Even though this looks suspiciously like it says 1000 nanofarad. And the original version I made had a 1000 nanofarad capacitor in that position. However, if you look really closely on the back of this piece of paper where Julian's drawn this schematic, there's almost, I think there's just one and a half E's there in Wednesday, and at the top there's another one and a half, two E's in Tuesday. And if we look at lower down the post on 256.co.uk, it says, look, C6 is a 100 nanofarad capacitor. Sorry, the scan was done in two parts, then joined. So my first charge controller was wrong. Of course, the only other issue we've got is... The AT Tiny 85 doesn't have a USB, it doesn't have a useful way of connecting to it. So let's see what we can do about that. So doing a quick search of the web, we can find that we can use our Arduino as ISP. And here's the um, diagram of how to wire that up. So to be able to do that, we need to open the example, which is Arduino ISP. And we need to make our settings so we are using an Arduino Uno and it's on COM7. So we can upload that to our Arduino. So rather than uh, have to set up the breadboard every time I wanted to program an 80, uh, Tiny85, um, I've created this uh, little circuit board. It's a mess, but it works perfectly. Um, it's got the little capacitor across uh, reset and ground and each of those pins we looked at in that diagram are connected in the right place and it means I can just plug in my AT Tiny 85 and program it. The AT Tiny 85 plugs in the right pins on that side and that side. As you can see, I've marked to make sure I get it in the right place. So now I'm almost ready to program my AT Tiny 85. Our Arduino IDE needs to know uh, what it's programming to, and the AT Tinies aren't in the default IDE, I don't believe. So we need to go to File and Preferences and the additional board manager URLs here and we need to add a new URL um, and I've got that one here I will also post this underneath the video in case you can't see it okay okay once we've installed that repository we can go to tools Board, Board Manager, wait for it to synchronize, and then search for AT Tiny and install. And once we can, we can close that, and you may need to restart Arduino IDE, but now I can choose. AT Tiny. So tools AT Tiny, and I'm using the AT Tiny 85. Now, this is straight from a supplier, and they didn't suggest um, if there was anything on this chip. I doubt there is. So I'm going to assume that it's already set to 1 megahertz internal, but from what I understand, we want to know the frequency of a PWM to be as high as possible, and to achieve that, we can set this chip to 8 MHz internal clock speed. So, to do that, uh, to set that up, we need to burn the bootloader. But first, we need to make sure we're picking the right COM port. In my case, this Arduino is in COM port 7, and we need to change the programmer to Arduino as ISP. So let's burn that bootloader. Yep, 
done. So now we can, using all those same settings, we can upload this sketch. There it is compiling, we'll see some flashing lights. And the sketch has been uploaded to our AT Tiny. Okay, so what we can see on screen now is my software oscilloscope. It's not very good, I'll admit, but it was cheap and I needed to see if I could get the uh, pulse waves to be uh, invert from each other, be in antiphase. Um, now, this is really difficult to show, but if I just touch that pin and that pin with my probes, there we go, we can see they are in antiphase from each other, however you can also see that they're not quite in the middle of each other. Um, the rising edge there of the yellow trace is at exactly the same point as the falling edge of the green. Um, now that potentially could be a problem, however I've not been able to get rid of that issue so if anybody can help me with that I'd be uh, that would be gratefully received. You may be able to see in the bottom left hand corner the frequency is about 33 kilohertz which is pretty fast so hopefully that will make an efficient charge pump 21.3 volts on the charge pump so that overlapping doesn't seem to be causing too much of a problem but of course the reason why we're here in the first place is to find out how much current the AT Tiny draws compared to the Pro Mini. So let me just plug this in. So what's that? About 11.5 milliamps. Well, I'm pretty pleased with that because that's half of what the uh, Pro Mini pulls using the onboard regulator. But can I make it even more efficient? Well, yes, I can look at that 5.5 milliamps. And there is absolutely no change to the hardware whatsoever. And there's no change to sketch either. So what have I done? Well, of course, the answer is I've reduced the clock speed of the AT Tiny 85. And that, of course, reduces the power consumption. But as they say around these parts, you don't get up for note, and as a result, the frequency of my charge pump has now reduced to 4 kilohertz. And the question is, will that affect the efficiency? Will that affect the voltage being created? Well, yes, that voltage has come down a little bit, but actually, it's still working surprisingly well. Obviously this uh, project wouldn't have been possible without Julian Eilert's original schematic and code, so I thank him for that, and of course that challenge, or what I took as a challenge, to reduce the power consumption of the Arduino Pro Mini version of the solar charge controller. I think I've done a pretty good job of that. There is obviously some uh, more testing I need to do with this version. I need to actually attach it to a solar panel and a battery. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I've certainly enjoyed learning more about the AT Tiny 85. So please give us a thumbs up if you can, subscribe down below, and comment and share if you will. Thanks for watching.